Let's talk about simple circuits and Ohm's law. Now, simple circuit is one where you just have one voltage source and one device, resistor, whatever that's actually using the electricity. Now, to start things off, we need to actually be able to draw some circuit diagrams, or sometimes we would call it schematics. Anytime you see pretty much a straight line, that represents the wire. This little zigzag thing represents a resistor or anything that's using the electricity. And we just generically use that instead of trying to draw uh, a toaster or whatever that's using electricity. Sometimes we'll actually use a light bulb. So we'll use a simple, <clears throat> they look something like this to represent a light bulb. But otherwise we'll just normally use a resistor. And this could be a, this is a battery. And the long side is the positive side and the short side is the negative side. And you can draw one by itself or you can draw multiple batteries. So that would be two batteries connected in series with each other. Either way is fine, just as long as you represent the battery and that's your voltage source. Let's put these together and see if we can identify a series circuit. So here's a bunch of examples here. Which one of these is a simple circuit? I'll give you a chance to look and then we'll go over it. Okay, so this first one is not a simple circuit. There's nothing to use electricity. A lot of times we call this a short, although that's not the only thing that we call a short. Sometimes where the wires are broken and don't make good connections, we'll sometimes call that a short as well. This one that is a good simple circuit. We've got our battery, we got one resistor, and one complete loop from one side of the battery to the other. That's a good simple circuit. This one, likewise, that's a good simple circuit. It doesn't matter how many batteries you have, it's just that you only have one resistor. And so you can draw it this way with two battery cells and one resistor going around. It doesn't really matter where you put the resistor, whether it's on top or on the side. This, I think, actually looks a little bit better, but either way is correct. It's just as long as you have one loop and just one resistor. This one is not a simple circuit. See how both lines connect to the positive side of the battery. So there's no potential difference here, so no current will flow. So that's not a, a simple circuit. This one, yes, that's a simple circuit. We got one battery, one loop from one side of the battery to the other with one resistor. This one, like that one, is not a simple circuit, nor is this one. Again, that's supposed to represent the battery there. It's not a very good drawing. But again, both wires are connected to the same post on the battery, so no current will flow through that circuit because there's no potential difference. This one, yes, that's a good simple circuit. It doesn't matter where the resistor is, just as long as you have one loop from one side of the battery to the other, and the resistor is in that loop someplace. We, we usually try to make the circuit diagrams nice and straight, straight lines, because what the circuit diagram does is it shows you where everything's connected. When you build the circuit in real life, it's probably not going to look this neat. But with nice straight lines, we can tell that this is connected to that, and that's connected back to the other side. And that's what the main idea behind a circuit diagram is, to show you where all the connections are. So some important definitions. Current. That's... Well, well, I'm going to use the conventional definition of current, which current is the flow of positive charges. Ben Franklin came up with that, and out of respect for him, we keep that same definition, even though we know it's technically not right. Positive charges are not moving in the circuit. It's actually negative charges, the electrons moving from one side of the battery to the other. But Ben Franklin didn't know that at the time, so he had to choose, and he got it wrong. But... He got it exactly wrong, so we can still use it, and it's still helpful because we'll have things like right-hand rules based on that. So I'm going to still use the definition of the flow of positive charges is the current, and current is measured in amperes or amps, and you just usually just put an A after the number, so 5 A is 5 amps. Resistance, we use capital R. It's how hard it is to push current through that circuit. The more resistance it is, the harder it is to push. Um, we like to use water systems. I like to use traffic. The traffic's like at rush hour, very hard to move. That's a high resistance. 
If there's nobody on the road and you can travel very fast, that's a low resistance. And so it's simply how hard it is for those charges to move through that wire or that device. And we use ohm or ohms for the unit for resistance. And we use this uh, Greek letter omega to represent ohms because we can't use an O because it looked like, well, zero. So we use the Greek letter omega. So five omegas are as five ohms. Potential difference, that's the technical name for it. A lot of times we use the slang term voltage, and we use a capital V for that. It is what causes the charges to move. I put push here, but it's not a force. It's actually a potential difference. So think about more like potential energy. If everything was flat and we put a ball on it, the ball wouldn't row in any particular direction. It would pretty much stay right there. But if we tilt one side up, now we have a higher potential energy here, lower potential energy here, and so that ball will flow down or roll down that ramp. Potential difference is the same way except with charges. On the battery, you have a high potential on one side, low potential on the other, so it's literally falling from one side to the other through that circuit that you've made. So this will be one side of the battery, let's say the positive, and this will be the other side of the battery, which is negative. And the current is flowing through that wire, basically falling from that high potential to that low potential. And we measure potential difference, and the reason why we call it voltage, in volts. So I just put volts here instead of voltage. We measure it in volts. And we use the lowercase v. So this is one time where the symbol in the equation and the unit uses the same letter. Now, what math can we get into with this? Well, we basically have two equations, Ohm's Law and the equation for power. Now, this is electrical power. You may have seen power before as power is work divided by time. And that is still true. So we can equate this physical work to electrical work. But electric work, power is current times voltage. In Ohm's Law, voltage is equal to current times resistance. I like writing it in those two ways because it's a little bit easier to do the math. But again, V is potential difference measured in volts. I is current measured in amps. R is resistance measured in ohms. And power is measured in watts. And so let's take this one right here. So I've got my simple circuit. We've got a 6-volt battery, 3-ohm resistor. Let's figure out the current and power for that circuit. So we have resistance here, so that's R. And 6 volts is the voltage or potential difference. So we got V and R, so I'm going to start off with Ohm's Law. V equals IR. Voltage is 6. Current we don't know. Resistance is 3. A little division. 6 divided by 3 gives me 2 amps of current flowing through that circuit. And since there's 2 amps of current flowing that, through that circuit, then, and there's only one route from one side of the battery to the other, that means everywhere along this wire, if we put an ammeter, we would measure 2 amps of current. So right there we have 2 amps of current through this resistor, 2 amps of current. Over here we two have 2 amps of current. We have 2 amps of current everywhere in that circuit going from one side of the battery to the other. And to figure out power, power is current times voltage. So the current is 2 amps. We just calculate that. The voltage is 6 volts. And so the power of this circuit is 12 watts. So I have 12 watts of power. The energy through this circuit is 12 joules per second. So let's look at another one. Let's say we got a radio. It draws 12 amps of current when plugged into a 120 volt outlet. And let's say this is a DC outlet because... There's actually a separate symbol that we use for alternating current. We want to find the resistance and power of the radio, and we're assuming that this is ohmic, which means it obeys Ohm's law. So if I want to draw my circuit diagram, we have that one resistor, which is our radio. So this is 120 volts. We have a current of... 12 amps running through the circuit, we will find the resistance and power. Well, 
I can start this any place, but I'm actually going to start off using Ohm's Law, V equals IR, and actually finding out the resistance here for this. Voltage is 120, current is 12, and we got to find the resistance. The little division, resistance for this is going to be 10 ohms. So our, our radio is has a resistance of 10 ohms. And to figure out the power of the system, we're going to use PIV, P equals IV. So we have VIR and PIV, ohms law and power. We have current of 12 amps. The voltage is 120 volts. So we have a power of 1,440 watts of power. A lot of power for that little radio. Let's do one more example. On this one, we've got a 22-watt heater that draws 5 amps of current. So again, if we draw a circuit diagram, I like to draw two batteries. We have our resistor back to the other side, but we don't know voltage, we don't know resistance, we just know that our current is 5 amps, but we also know that there's a power of 22 watts for this heater. So I'm going to start there, since I know the power, I'm going to start off with P equals uh, V. Power is 22 watts. Current is 5 amps, so we got to figure out the voltage. So let's see. We've got 22 watts divided by 5. We've got 4.4 volts. So not a lot of voltage there, but also not a lot of power. This is not a very good heater. But that doesn't make any difference. We're going to go ahead and solve it the rest of the way. So now we're going to figure out the resistance. So V equals IR, voltage is 4.4, we know our current is 5 amps, we got to find the resistance. Okay, so 4.4 divided by 5 gives me a resistance of 0 0.88 ohms, so a very small resistance is needed with that very small amount of voltage to actually give you a high current, but that still, with that low voltage, doesn't give you a whole lot of power. So let's talk about this. Let's say we got the same voltage here. Let's use this one. It's a prettier picture anyway. So... Let's say that I increase my resistance. If I increase my resistance, what happens? Well, if we keep the same voltage and increase the resistance, that means there's less current. Less current with that same voltage means less power. So as we increase the resistance, current goes down and power goes down. So this is like on your stereo. If you turn down the volume, you're actually increasing the resistance. Less current flows to the speaker, and thereby the speaker gets less energy, so it's less powerful, so it's not as noisy. Same thing if you dim lights. If you increase the resistance with that variable resistor there, you reduce the amount of current going to the light bulb. That means the light bulb gets less energy, so it's less powerful, so it gets dimmer. So. And the other way is true. If we decrease the resistance, more current can flow, so that device gets more energy, so it's going to be brighter if it's a, if a light bulb, louder if it's a speaker, warmer if it's a heater. So we can control things with that resistance, and that controls the amount of current flowing through. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, and hopefully that's helpful. And I will show you some more demonstrations later on.